It feels so good to have someone be so upfront because I've never really had that before, but I feel like I can be that with you. Oh, hey guys, it's Liz Long, and this is your Red Wine Recap of Married at First Sight. I just got a little bit caught up in Chris and Nicole's honeymoon there for a second. And yes, I said honeymoons, hence the honeymoon-inspired getup I have on today. We're off to Jamaica. I could not be more excited. We first had to endure the brunches with the family. I mean, I wish Lifetime would just cut that segment out already. But we're finally off to Jamaica. And as soon as we got into the good part, Lifetime cut it off at like an hour and a half last night. They cut it short on us. What's up with that? But recap we must, so let's just get into it already. We're gonna start things off with Kirsten and Shaquille. Now you guys know that Kirsten has yet to give Shaquille a kiss. I mean, I know we are only in day one after the wedding, but still her big thing has been, I don't I don't give him a kiss because he hasn't asked me. He hasn't asked me. Well, guess what? I have a kiss. <laughs> I gotta wait. You have to wait. Okay. Yes, you have to wait. So what's your excuse now, Kirsten? I still want to ease into things. Um, I know sometimes like a kiss can make someone want to do something else that's intimate, maybe sex. I don't know what else it will lead to, but I don't want us to get into that and get sidetracked from getting to know each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what I really want to talk about tonight is the two guys who are giving major red flags versus the ones who are getting the actual intimacy right. We have some guys who think intimacy is just trying to maybe have sex with their new wives, whereas other ones are truly seeming to get to know each other. I think you guys can probably figure out who I'm going to talk about. Meanwhile... Okay, so the ones who look like they're getting intimacy all wrong are Eris and Clint. Not really a surprise there because they are the ones who talked about their numbers or having sex two weeks before they got um, chosen for this experiment. And Clint, of course, is the one who said 65. I've slept with 65 women. So yeah, it just seems like intimacy for them is all about trying to have sex with their wives, probably even on the first night. Hold strong, Gina, hold strong. We did not have sex last night. I definitely wanted to have sex last night. Bravo, Gina, bravo. Now, while Gina might be holding strong, it seems like Jasmine is just ready to give up the goods, and I don't understand why. First, she's got this cousin, me mugging her the whole time, and this cousin just needs to go away. She's back, guys. She needs to go away already, okay? And then Eris, who has been barely giving her anything, gets into the honeymoon suite and he's like feed me grapes woman and what does she do she feeds him the grapes i'm like no jasmine no you're the one who should be in the tub he should be the one feeding you the grapes okay and in case we had any doubt about what eris is thinking intimacy is we have this clip from next week what else do you want to know about me what's your favorite sexual position oh eris no, no, Eris. You need to take a page out of Chris's book. I admire her beauty. I admire her courage. I can't say that enough. Like, I won't take any of that for granted. Chris and Nicole. Oh, okay. I just breathe easier when I'm talking about them. I have a feeling that Chris tells Nicole she's beautiful probably 50 times a day. But my question for you guys and what I really want to know is, do you think it's too much? Do you think Chris is giving too much? Do you think it might end up exhausting Nicole? Like, too much of a nice guy. And I think Chris has had issues with this in the past because he reveals to her in a really nice moment of vulnerability, he reveals to her in their honeymoon. He says, you know, I felt like I was with a stranger the last time I was on a vacation. He said, which is weird because you are technically the stranger, but I feel more comfortable with you. And this girl apparently, you know, wouldn't kiss him. It was like she was almost repulsed by him and she wouldn't hold his hand. So she was just basically downright mean to him. And sometimes women do that to the nice guy, unfortunately, right? 
So the fact, and I said it a while ago, that Nicole really appreciates Chris's niceness. I said that's going to go a really long way for this couple. But last night I started thinking, is this niceness going to wear on her? You know, but I don't know. I don't, I don't want, I don't think it will. And I'm really hoping it won't because what Chris is doing is he's also pairing that niceness with real intimacy, with real moments of wanting to get to know her. You know, do you wonder, could she just be anybody and he would be treating them like really sweet? And I don't think so. I think he truly, li truly likes Nicole. And I think what she's giving him in return is the fact that she does really appreciate him. Okay guys, I've rambled on enough. Hey, let's just get into the awards. Best spousey of the week. I really don't want to do this every week and I don't plan to, but we've got to give credit where credit is due. Nicole and Chris. And you know the reasons why. Other best spousey, I am going to do a runner up and I'm going to give it to Shaquille. Yeah, Shaquille didn't tell Kristen until the last minute, sort of, that, hey, we're not going to join the honeymoons when everybody else does because you got to accompany me to a work event. But, you know, he is being patient. So let's give the guy a little bit of credit. Most lousy. Most lousy of the week is Eris. <laughs> you guessed it, Eris. Eris, intimacy does not equal sex every time. Okay? And speaking of which, Jasmine, <laughs> you're up on the board now too. If this is giving me Katina and Elijah Wan vibes. Am I the only one getting Katina and Elijah Wan vibes from Jasmine and Eris? Because... Remember Elijah one? He was like, you know, you're not cleaning the apartment good enough. And she just kind of like lost herself and she just would do whatever Elijah one wanted her to do. I'm getting this vibe from Jasmine. Jasmine, girl, you need to put your foot down. You need to not bend over backwards for a guy who is giving you hardly anything. And then finally, most spousey is Eris's <laughs> cousin. She needs to go away. And you guys, you know we're going to see her on that week where they do the games with the family and friends. Yeah, she's probably going to be there too and haunting us. So she, you just kindly see your way out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So guys, that about does it. I look forward to next week where we are in full honeymoon mode. Yes, full honeymoon mode. It's the best time of the year. So until then, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.